So for this presentation, I'm going to talk about the artist and illustrator Walter Crane. Walter Crane was born in the year 1845 in the city of Liverpool, England. Crane was born into a very artistic family as his father and many of his siblings were in the art industry. Thomas Crane, his older brother, was also a successful illustrator. Walter Crane worked alongside artist Randolph Calcott, known for his illustration books and was known well throughout the Royal Academy. Another artist that Crane worked alongside was Kate Greenaway, who was sought out by Edmund Evans, who also printed illustrations for Walter, Cr Walter Crane himself. The piece of artwork that is best known within Crane's work was in fact the illustration he produced for Lady of Schlott, a poem by Tennyson. Around about the same time, Crane tried to shy away from his ability to illustrate and tried painting portraits and landscapes. But this, however, did not bode well with the public's interest. In 1863, Crane began his work with woodblock printer Edmund Evans, who then published the Yellow Backs children's toy books. Crane was only 18 years old at this point of time. Edmund and Walter developed two to three books each year between 1865 and 1876. A lot of Crane's work was about the use of thick, bold lines and a grayscale colour palette. However, this changed once he started illustrating for children's books. This includes the likes of the book Fairy Queen and other fairy tales and rhymes. For example, Crane once said, Children are like the ancient Egyptians, appear to see most things in profile and like definite statements and design. They prefer well-defined forms and bright frank colour. Crane was heavily influenced, especially by artist William Morris. They were known to collaborate on a piece of work named Goose Girl, which was a, which was a watercolour painting made by Crane, then turned into a tapestry by Morris. In the 19th century, Crane tried to involve himself in many movements, this including both art and political movements. In this slide here, you see a pamphlet or poster created by Crane himself. This campaign poster was named How to Dress Without a Corset, which was put forward to try and get away from the social expectations of women wearing or having to wear tight clothing. Critical analysis. Looking deeper into the work of Walter Crane, I began to find so many similarities in work with some of my favourite artists such as Arthur Rackham and John Tenniel. As I had discovered that one of Crane's influences was in fact Tenniel, I began to warm up to his work. However, there is one side of Crane's work that I did not enjoy, which was his adult take on illustration, which was in fact straying away from his true roots of children's books illustration. When it came to his children's books illustration, there was a unique and intriguing approach that made, that he made, still keeping to the period of time that he was in. This was by using block printing and a limited colour palette. Crane's work was not modern, but it was a new approach and a good starting point for more children's book illustrators. With my response to Walter Crane's work, I would also like to create my own cover of a folklore children's book. I hope to try out a type of printing technique, maybe lino or screen printing. I began to, however, with limited use of the facilities on campus, sketch out various styles of book covers and worked on my calligraphy as Walter Crane frequently used different types of fonts for his covers. The main response is still a work, a work in progress, but the idea is clearly laid out. In conclusion, researching an artist that I only knew as much as his name was a very accommodating trait for my future projects. In closing, I must add that having researched in depth the history of Walter Crane, I have learned that the children's books today were all de derived from the talent of Crane and the passion he had to create such books for the entertainment, entertainment of children. Therefore, that is why he will always be known to be one of the greatest illustrators of all time.